Welcome everyone to today's session. Uh, this is a session that will talk about lessons from Indonesia. And we will actually be joined by wonderful panel today. Uh, they're all here and we'd like to just quickly say hi to everyone. There's Ibu Nurdiana Darus from Unilever Indonesia. Hi Ibu. There's also Pak Eka Chandra Buana or we call it, uh, we call him Pak Chandra from Bapenas. Uh, even the building behind him is actually Bapenas. Uh, we also have representative uh, <laughs> coming from the academics community from Research Institute. Uh, Amy Duchel uh, from C4. Hi, Amy. We also have Pat Sanjeev Lewis. Uh, Sanjeev came, uh, is coming from Sale Ventures. And last but not least, the gentleman from SIAC, Mas Mus Rahmat, or we call him Gun. And we also have Pak Bupati from West Kalimantan, Sintang. Hello, Bapak. Florentinos. Hi, Pa. So thank you for taking your time off. Actually, it's a public holiday in Indonesia, yet everybody is still here because we're excited to share the lessons that we've studied so far from Indonesia and see whether multi-stakeholders is actually the answer. So thank you for all the speakers. We will see you soon, but now we would like to actually interact with the audience. Hi, everyone. We know that there's 300 plus uh, registered participants for this session. So we'd like to make this as interactive as possible. Ristika is going to share um, her uh, the Slido uh, screen. And the first question is going to be to you guys to ask whether you know who you are. Before that, we are actually going to remind you quickly that this uh, session is uh, available both in English as well as in Bahasa. Don't forget to activate your translation tools in WOFA and you can just quickly add the button in the translation device. So now we go to the Slido screen. You go to slido.com and just type in GLF biodiversity as code. And please let us know so that the speakers also feel that they're not alone in this virtual room, right? Are you national government? Are you subnational government? Are you supply chain companies? Are you investment or financial institutions? Are you civil society? Are you academicians? Um, or are you public or are you students? I think there's a, a, a bunch of other options uh, more down. If you want to slide, uh, slide it downwards, Matika. Um, uh, so there's also development partners or agencies, a researcher and academician. So if you would like to put in your vote, we will open it in. Uh, we will open it quickly. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, anybody is in here? Okay, we will keep the poll running uh, for the for the next um, couple of minutes, uh, and we will come back to the results. So two people have uh, put in three. So yay! Civil society, students, and general public. We also have development partners, and yeah, we will visit the poll after this. Let you guys uh, have some time to fill it in. I'm going to actually quickly run through what Sustainable Districts Association is or LTKL. We are proudly co-hosting today's event with C4 and just a brief overview about what LTKL is. We are an association of districts government. So I'm representing the secretariat. We are the backbone team, but the actual founder and manager and our boss is actually the district members. So one of the district members is here, Pak Bupati from Sintang is actually my boss. So I have 10 bosses all around Indonesia, in Sumatra, in Sulawesi, as well as in, in Kalimantan. We have two types of districts. We have the forest rich and peat rich districts. And we also have a commodity production center district. Not to say that they don't have any forest or peat, but to say that there are already industrial size operation within their area. We have coffee, cacao, rubber, palm oil, non-timber forest, products, spices, and coconut as part of the strategic commodities. And the reason for LTKL to exist based on the founder's decision is because they want a forum that helps boost regional competitiveness through multi
multi-stakeholders collaboration to achieve their sustainable vision in accordance with the national target of sustainable development goals and emission reduction. So in order to achieve that, we just launched our mission uh, this year. So every year we have a general assembly and the highest decision making uh, tool in LTKL is actually the general assembly. So I cannot do anything without the approval of the general assembly. This year we have launched the sustainable economy or nature based economy together with the National Investment Board, as well as the state owned enterprise for cooperative and small medium scale enterprises, MESCO. Um, and the sustainable economy and nature based economy is something that is uh, going to be the focus of today's discussion. What it what it is and how does LTKL sees this? We have a slide to describe this that talks about it in our term, which is commune nature, community and nature living in harmony. But the basic premise of sustainable and or nature-based economy from LTKL is actually the fact that each district will be able to produce value-added, high-quality product that's based on nature, well-preserved nature, be it forest, be it peat, be it karst, that's the main recipe of success and because this intermediate industry is going to be run directly by the community we are aiming to have this five pillars five blueprints to be able to ensure its success the first pillar that Pak Bupati from Sintang is going to talk about is policy and regulation, as well as planning and goal setting. We'll also go to SIAK from Pak Mas Mus Rahman, uh, Mas Pak Gun, that is going to talk about the multi-stakeholders governance. Uh, then we will hear from the panelists on the investment portfolio and joint reporting as well as communication. So all this is represented by the panel today. Before we give the floor directly to start the talk, because I know all of you are excited about this, we will just quickly take a uh, look at the result of the Slido before that represent who you are. Let me uh, pull up the screen real quick. So who are we? Who are we in the room? 34% are civil society. We have development partner agencies here. We have researchers and academicians. We have students, we have general public, we have supply chain companies. We also have uh, financial institutions um, go down uh, quickly. And we also have subnational government. So it's a good representation of who is in the room. Um, hopefully this also, this also inspires a multi-stakeholders conversation throughout the session. And now we would like to actually ask another question. And this is about why are you here? Whether you're passionate about nature-based solutions or are you passionate about business and economy or are you passionate like me of integrating the two or are you wanting to collaborate in future featured district in SIAK or in Sintang or in other districts of LTKL or jurisdictions in Indonesia or are you already collaborating in uh, the featured district so you're here to support Sintang and SIAK or and this is also like most of most of the time this is my reason I just want to hang out with cool people virtually so Pak Chandra here is very cool Pak Mbu Amy, Mas Gun, a bunch of cool people that attracted me to always follow this type of session Great. So now that some people are already putting in their answers, uh, majority talks about integration. Uh, we are proud to announce that we're going to launch the first animated video all the way from SIAK in support of Mas Gun from Explore SIAK. This video is going to be giving a glimpse of what we think nature-based economy is. So enjoy. The next two minutes. Indonesia adalah zamrud katulistiwa dunia. Kita punya hutan, gambut, dan berbagai jenis tumbuhan dan hewan di penjuru Nusantara. Mulai 2020, Indonesia juga bakal punya amunisi tambahan. 190 juta anak bangsa yang inovatif, kreatif, dan imajinatif. Sayangnya, PR kita masih banyak. Saat alam Indonesia belum dikelola dengan lestari, banyak bencana yang timbul. Ditambah lagi, bahan alam masih banyak dijual mentah tanpa diolah jadi produk turunan bernilai tinggi. Investasi belum merata, apalagi berkualitas. Anak muda masih banyak yang menganggur atau lari ke kota. Pasti ada cara yang lebih baik. Melalui visi ekonomi lestari di satu daerah, 
pemerintah daerah, swasta, masyarakat sipil, akademisi, kaum muda, dan masyarakat bisa bergotong royong menyelesaikan PR tadi. Contohnya, suatu kabupaten di Sumatera punya potensi ikan gabus. Karena gambutnya yang sehat, ternyata dapat memproduksi albumin yang baik untuk imunitas tubuh berkat gotong royong para pihak. Ternyata, ikan gabus juga dapat dibudidaya bersama, sehingga kawasan gambut tetap terjaga dan ikan tidak punah. Produk turunan tersebut juga dapat dipasarkan lebih luas lagi dengan pemasaran dan kemasan menarik dan ramah lingkungan. Keuntungannya nyata bagi masyarakat di kabupaten, karena nilai jual yang berkali lipat. Ekonomi Lestari menawarkan model pembangunan yang menjaga lingkungan dan menyejahterakan masyarakat lewat industri produk turunan basis alam yang dikelola secara lestari bagi konsumen di penjuru Indonesia, bahkan dunia. Jika kita bergotong royong sesuai peran masing-masing, semua PR mudah terselesaikan. Kita makin bangga dengan produk Indonesia bernilai tinggi yang produksinya aman. Investasi berkualitas dapat mendukung sektor yang tepat. Tanah kita sehat, air kita bersih, dan 190 juta anak bangsa mendapat tempat berkarya di penjuru Indonesia. Bayangkan jika ekonomi lestari dapat merangkai masa depan Indonesia. Tanah subur, air bersih, dan masyarakat mandiri. Kita pasti bisa gotong royong agar cita-cita tanah air Indonesia, zamrud katulistiwa kebanggaan bangsa bisa terwujud. Lingkungan terjaga, masyarakat sejahtera. There you go. That is our definition of nature-based economy, trying to find the actual potential that is buried maybe deep within our land and our water and keep it preserved so that at the end this can be the added value product that we all need in Indonesia. Now that is coming from our perspective in uh, Sustainable Districts Association. We are basing it together with the district members and the partners on three national targets, the Sustainable Development Goals, Emission Reduction, as well as what was quoted in the video high quality investment. Now we want to hear from the national government themselves. Pak Chandra is our first speaker that uh, would shed some light in terms of the important thing that Indonesia is fighting for right now, which is building back better after the pandemic. The time and floor is yours, Pak Chandra, representing the National Planning Agency from Bapenas. You have five minutes and I will cue you when there is one minute left. Thank you for being here with us, Pak Chandra. Oke, okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mbak Gita. Selamat malam, uh, selamat siang ya mungkin ya kalau yang di apa waktu sana. Uh, selamat uh, datang dari Mbak Adi, uh, Bu Ade juga, kemudian Bapak Bupati, kemudian Sanjif, uh, Pak Gun, uh, Bu Emi. Oke. Okay. Uh, <tuh> Let me first begin with a warm welcome to all of you that have spent your time to virtually attend Global Landscape Forum 2020. I, I would like uh, also to extend my thanks to uh, appreciate and appreciation to the Sustainable District Association or LPKL that have excellently organized this session and provide me an opportunity to convey the bridging information at this info, uh, important event. I want to share what the government of Indonesia to set plan in Indonesia. Indonesia has launched its vision for Indonesia 2045 to become high income country and fifth largest GDP in the world. Economy is described as a prosperous society that is equitable from remote village to big city, from east to west, accompanied especially by food, energy, water, and environment security. <clears throat> the mission uh, to achieve that objective is carried out in detail through the medium term plan 2020-2024, and it is in line with the global agreement sustainable uh, development goals. <laughs> but now, with the global pandemic, the journey toward to the 2045 vision is hampered. The economy contracted deeply, increasing unemployment in all regions, in all sectors. 
Because of the pandemic, new challenges emerge, especially in people consumption pattern. Now, people are looking for healthy product and environment. Demand for healthy and organic food, health product and safer environment is significantly increasing. A strategy is needed on how to recover and to revive the economy so that economic prosperity and environmental sustainability can be achieved together. One of which is through sustainable production and consumption through nature-based economy. We are fortunate Indonesia is blessed with a great culture of social corporation, NGO, community, companies, investor and government in all tiers. In all tiers, join force and formulate, con and formulate concrete strategies to achieve the common vision, namely social welfare and, so and environmental sustainability. Uh, I think uh, the information, uh, that's the information from our side. With all the speakers today, we can learn everything so we can improve our mission. I think uh, that's a short remark from me. Uh, thank you, uh, Bugita. Thank I'm you, Pai Chandra. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you actually have 37 seconds left. So yes. <laughs> well done, yeah. Pai Chandra. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for being here and also sh for shedding some light in terms of what um, national government is right now prioritizing. It's good to know that the nature-based economy is also along the same line and actually a critical piece of what the national government is trying to push for. Now, yeah. before we begin, um, thank you, Pak, for sharing that. And uh, hopefully, uh, don't go anywhere, Pak. Uh, we will actually hear again from Pak Chandra towards the end of the session because Pak Chandra is also our keynote listener for the session where uh, he is going to be absorbing all of the discussion and helping us to reflect at the end of this session. So not keynote speaker, we put keynote listener so that it becomes a reflection for, for all of us. Now we'd like to actually invite you back to Slido and give us one word that you think about when you hear the word nature-based economy. So it's a word cloud and the more people voted for one word, uh, the bigger the word would be. So go ahead, uh, the same code, uh, GLF Biodiversity. I'm going to look at my screen again. Um, 30 seconds, uh, if you would like to put yours in, go to slido.com. And the first word is here, green. Okay, let's see whether other words are popping up. Uh, the hashtag is GLF Biodiversity. We still have 15 seconds, courtesy of Pak Chandra. Um, oh, interesting. Greenwashing risk. There is a, a notion of greenwashing risk. Uh, we also have representative from uh, district government that would help sort of shed some light in terms of policy, how to make sure that there is safeguards to that. The word prosperity is actually um, getting bigger and bigger. So the bigger the word, it means more people are putting the same word. So if you like any word that you see on the screen, you can go ahead and write the same word and it will become bigger. So now the big word is sustainable and prosperity. Sustainable and prosperity goes hand in hand. Sustainable is getting bigger. We only have 10 minutes um, to uh, end the poll, but it, it looks like we get a good sort of glimpse of what the audience are thinking. Uh, there's vegan, there's keadilan, there is indigenous, there's not greedy. This is so important. And also uh, value added. Okay, these are the words that everybody are thinking about when they hear about nature-based economy. Of course, we are excited to hear and know more from Sintang and Siak. So now the time is yours. Welcome back to Global Landscape Forum and our session is going to talk about jurisdictional approach, the lessons learned from Indonesia. Now we're going to travel to West Kalimantan now and visit the district of Sintang where Pak Bupati, the head of the district, is uh, joining us. Selamat sore Bapak Bupati. Selamat sore Ibu Gita, Bapak Ibu sekalian di 
acara ini ya selamat sore semoga sehat semua ya terima kasih banyak bapak sudah bergabung mungkin ingin diceritakan sedikit terkait perjalanan sintang lestari nih pak dari uh, sisi perencanaan dari sisi kebijakan dan peraturan uh, seperti apa sih uh, perjalanan sintang lestari sejauh ini baik ibu bapak ibu sekalian ya uh, kalau berbicara tentang bagaimana kita uh, mewujudkan Kabupaten Sintang Lestari, ini sesuatu hal yang tidak mudah sebenarnya. Saya selalu mengatakan bahwa harus dimulai dari suatu perencanaan yang baik. Ketika ada perencanaan yang baik, kemudian kita membuat suatu kebijakan-kebijakan, aturan-aturan dalam melaksanakan perencanaan itu. Nah, kemudian kan aturan-aturan ini kan nanti akan mengikat semua dari sisi investasi, dari sisi masyarakat, dari sisi pemerintah, siapapun yang melakukan kegiatan dalam rangka uh, membangun ya ekonomi masyarakat Kabupaten Sintang harus mentaati ketentuan-ketentuan aturan-aturan kebijakan-kebijakan yang kita buat ya supaya betul-betul melaksanakan apa yang sudah kita rencanakan dengan baik. Ini yang menurut saya itu nanti jadi bisa nanti kita capai apa yang kita harapkan dari uh, Kabupaten Sintang Lestari itu. Gitu. Siap Pak. Um, iya ini Sintang sudah memiliki uh, peraturan Bupati juga terkait Sintang Lestari dan juga rencana aksi bersama untuk daerah. Boleh diceritakan prosesnya seperti apa nih Pak pada saat penyusunan? Siapa yang terlibat? Bagaimana prosesnya? Silakan Pak Bupati. Baik ya, uh, aturan, beberapa aturan yang kita uh, keluarkan ya tentang bagaimana kita ingin mencapai sesuatu uh, uh, sintang Kabupaten Lestari memang uh, uh, selalu ya melibatkan semua stakeholder, terutama teman-teman akademisi ya, penggiat-penggiat lingkungan ya, nah kemudian juga uh, pemerintah ya, kemudian masyarakat uh, adat ya kan lokal ya ini juga kita minta ya kita minta suatu pendapat ide ide ya inisiasi inisiasi sehingga aturan yang kita buat ya dalam rangka kita uh, menerapkan ya uh, asas asas bagaimana kita memanfaatkan sumber daya alam ya misalnya hutan dan lahan tapi betul betul uh, memberikan suatu manfaat bukan hanya bagi uh, pemerintah tapi sebenarnya terutama bagi masyarakat setempat. Sehingga masyarakat punya dampak. Peraturan yang kita buat betul-betul memberikan dampak terhadap ekonomi masyarakat lokal yang memang berada di kawasan atau di dalam lingkungan itu. Nah ini perlu kerjasama semua pihak. Tidak bisa pemerintah sendiri. Kita buka. Nah inilah sebenarnya uh, harapan kami. Semakin banyak yang memberikan pendapat, semakin banyak yang memberikan apa namanya, ide, ya, inisiatif, ya ini sangat lebih, akan lebih baik aturan itu betul-betul nanti dia bisa menjadi guiden dan maka kita mencapai sintang lestari itu siap pak ini menarik sekali dari sisi lebih banyak kepala lebih banyak ide maka lebih inovatif nih yeah. pastinya bagaimana inovasi-inovasi yang saat ini sudah dikembangkan oleh sintang juga untuk mendukung visi sintang lestari tersebut boleh diceritakan sedikit pak baik ya sebenarnya banyak sekali ya uh, implementasi ya dari inovasi-inovasi ya masyarakat terutama pemerintah sendiri kemudian pihak-pihak swasta ya dalam rangka uh, uh, menjalankan ya uh, visi misi untuk kita mencapai kabupaten lestari misalnya uh, dalam rangka kita memberikan tadi saya katakan uh, uh, kawasan hutan ya yang merupakan hutan adat misalnya Nah ini sangat baik, karena hutan adat ini kan menjadi pengakuan bagi masyarakat, bagaimana masyarakat mengelola hutan tersebut dengan kearifan lokal masyarakat itu sendiri. Mereka lebih tahu bagaimana cara mengelola hutan, karena hutan bagi masyarakat itu adalah sumber kehidupan, bukan hanya untuk dirinya sendiri sekarang itu, tapi untuk anak cucunya lebih jauh lagi, berpuluh-puluh tahun, bahkan ratusan tahun yang akan datang. Mereka menyadari betul itu. Itu adalah kearifan lokal ikatan yang sudah ada ya di batin masyarakat adat itu mereka menyadari betul ini anak, untuk anak cucu sehingga mereka mengelola sumber daya alam ya itu harus mem- mengikuti aturan-aturan yang sudah ditetapkan oleh masyarakat itu sendiri kemudian ada lagi misalnya uh, pembukaan lahan untuk pertanian 
berbasis kearifan lokal. Nah ini kan betul-betul sebenarnya hanya untuk uh, menanam ya paritas yang memang paritas lokal, paritas yang merupakan kearifan lokal, misalnya padi dengan beberapa sayur-sayuran ya di satu lahan yang mungkin tidak sampai satu hektar. Nah ini betul-betul dikelola, dibuka dengan kearifan lokal, dengan uh, dengan nanti uh, tidak di berpindah nanti ini dibelkan lagi tumbuh ya kemudian berpindah lagi nah ini nanti dibakar dengan terkendali dan uh, terbatas nah ini dan yakin tidak akan mungkin bisa uh, merembet ke ke lain-lain nah, ini nanti setelah setelah dilakukan usaha di situ ini akan tumbuh lagi akan ditumbuhkan lagi oleh masyarakat itu sendiri sehingga dia bisa lestari itu sih nah ini kearifan lokal ya. kira itu beberapa inovasi ya kita buat aturan supaya bisa untuk mengatur tata cara bagaimana supaya kearifan lokal ini betul-betul timbul tapi berpihak ber- ya, pada lingkungan yang kita harapkan. Iya, menarik sekali nih. Jadi kearifan lokal yang difasilitasi oleh peraturan supaya masyarakat tetap bisa bekerja gitu ya, mendapatkan manfaat ekonomi tapi lingkungannya terjaga. Selamat nih untuk Sintang. Bagaimana kira-kira kalau menurut Bapak ya Pak, kan ini banyak yang hadir dari berbagai negara, berbagai latar belakang. Kalau Sintang ingin lebih banyak lagi merangkul begitu, supaya visi Sintang Lestari lebih cepat tercapai, apa yang mau Bapak katakan nih kepada para hadirin yang sudah had, uh, sudah bergabung di acara hari ini? Yang pertama tentu harapan kami di sini, bagaimana upaya mendukung suatu misi kami ya bersama dengan masyarakat yang menyadari betul bahwa modal dasar pembangunan ekonomi di kabupaten ini adalah sumber daya alam seperti hutan dan uh, lahan. Nah untuk itu uh, kami perlukan sebenarnya uh, suatu riset ya. penelitian-penelitian ke arah bagaimana kita membuat suatu kebijakan ke depan, membuat perencanaan ke depan sehingga betul-betul dalam mengelola sumber daya alam ini bisa uh, lestari dan sustainable atau berkelanjutan itu satu jadi riset ini ini kan tidak dipunyai oleh kami di sini tentu kami berbagai pihak ya akademisi penggiat lingkungan para ahli ahli eh, apa namanya ekologi ya itu harus uh, segera bersama-sama berkolaborasi ayo kita melakukan itu yang kedua uh, tentu uh, pembinaan ya pembinaan kepada masyarakat kami ya bagaimana uh, selalu uh, betul-betul uh, menerapkan ya uh, kearifan lokal itu ya nah, ini kan ini kan bisa luntur ya kalau tidak kita bina terus yang kita kita terikat ini budaya adat istiadat nah, ini harus kita 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 bina ya uh, bagaimana memanfaatkan sumber daya alam untuk uh, ekonomi masyarakat sendiri supaya bisa lestari ya, kita uh, kita bina kita terus uh, apa namanya bimbing supaya masyarakat betul-betul tidak menghilangkan Uh, kearifan lokal itu sendiri. Yang ketiga tentu harapan kami ya uh, dari si mungkin finansial ini ini pasti nah, sehingga uh, tentu kita mengelola ya uh, rehabilitasi misalnya atau mengembangkan uh, sumber daya alam yang lebih lestari lagi tentu memerlukan uh, biaya nah, ini perlu kita 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 dorong ya supaya ini juga uh, sehingga apa yang kita harapkan ya dari sisi pelaksanaan dan nanti hasilnya ke depan bisa betul-betul itu uh, mencapai uh, apa yang kita harapkan uh, Kabupaten Sintang sebagai Kabupaten Lestari. Saya kira itu. Mantap Pak Bupati, sudah jelas sekali. Terima kasih banyak sudah bergabung. So ladies and gentlemen, that was super clear. You can either be an expert that is also joining Sintang in their sustainability journey. You can actually become part of the people that provide assistance and you can also help fun flow to support the sustainability journey of district like Sintang in West Kalimantan. Pak Bupati is available for the Q&A session, so if you have any question, please go ahead and write your question in the WUFA app, and we will make sure that Pak Bupati will answer your question in the discussion session later. Thank you so much. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Bupati. Thank you very much. Okay. All the way from Kalimantan, we're going to move our focus to Sumatra from the Siak district in Riau province, the one that is very famous for peat. And we're going to interview one of uh, a young man um, that is right now fighting for making sure that sustainability principle can be implemented well in the ground up. 
Mus Rahmat is joining us this afternoon. Halo Mas Gun. Halo, selamat sore. Selamat sore. Tadi kita sempat mendengar penjelasan dari Sintang yang punya mimpi Sintang Lestari. Boleh diceritakan kalau Siak nih katanya terkenal dengan visinya Siak Hijau. Kira-kira seperti apa visi Siak Hijau itu? Baik, uh, Siak sendiri punya lahan gambut sebesar uh, sebanyak 57% dari luas lahannya. Jadi sekitar 479.000 hektar. Dari 57% tadi 21%-nya adalah lahan gambut dalam sekitar 3 sampai 12 meter. Gambut ini sebenarnya sebuah potensi luar biasa bagi kami, tapi air-air ini jadi masalah. Uh, tahun 2015 itu terjadi kebakaran hutan yang sangat hebat, uh, dia membuat akhirnya banyak kendala bagi kami. Misalnya salah satu event besar yang ada di Siak, event internasional tidak bisa berjalan, uh, pesawat tidak bisa mendarat, dan banyak uh, hal yang tidak bisa kami lakukan. Ini, ini akhirnya mendorong uh, kawan-kawan di Siak, dari swasta, dari NGO, masyarakat, komunitas untuk meminta pemerintah untuk lebih konsen terhadap kebakaran hutan dan cara mencegahnya seperti apa. Nah, akhirnya lahirlah sebuah kebijakan namanya Siak Hijau. Siak Hijau ini sebenarnya sebuah pedoman bagi masyarakat, swasta, NGO dan tentunya pemerintah sendiri untuk melakukan pengelolaan lingkungan, pengelolaan sumber daya alam secara berla- berkelanjutan. Jadi itu ya. sebuah seperti buku panduan lah. Gitu. Oke, mimpinya apa nih yang mau dikejar di ujung dari Siak Hijau? Mimpinya pasti. Jadi uh, tak ada lain yang lain pasti inginnya tuh kesejahteraan masyarakat ada yang lain. Tapi kesejahteraan masyarakat yang kita inginkan uh, dengan cara apa? Pertanyaan dengan itu. Jadi kesejahteraan yang pengen kita capai itu dengan tetap memperhatikan dengan dengan pemulihan lingkungan walaupun lingkungannya tadi yang udah rusak gimana dari yang keadaan yang kita punya sekarang kita forward ke depan maju ke depan tetap membuat perubahan yang baik tapi tetap sejahtera, tujuannya menyejahterakan masyarakat siap menjaga lingkungan dan menyejahterakan masyarakat kira-kira inovasi nah. apa yang sudah dilakukan untuk memastikan itu terjadi nih baik saya pikir uh, masyarakat Melayu itu karena terbiasa hidup dengan alam kami hidup bagian dari alam gitu Jadi semua potensi alam itu adalah untuk kehidupan. Gitu. Nah, kami lihat satu-satu potensi yang besar yang kami punya itu berada di sektor perikanan. Salah satunya ikan gabus. Karena ikan gabus adalah ikan genemik yang bisa hidup di lahan gambut. Kita tahu sendiri air lahan gambut itu asam. Tapi ikan gabus ini ikan yang mampu hidup dengan baik. Ini suatu potensi besar yang kita punya. gitu. Dan ini kami pikir adalah langkah awal yang harus dilakukan untuk buat perubahan. Dari ikan gabus tadi. Dari ikan gabus bisa menjaga gambut. Ikan gabus ya. mau dipakai buat apa memang ini albumin tadi itu? Ya, jadi ikan gabus ini bisa membuat menghasil, uh, menghasilkan albumin. Kita tahu uh, potensi albumin sangat besar. Kami dibantu oleh kawan-kawan uh, LTKL dan uh, Gerapana juga untuk melakukan riset uh, kecil-kecilan. Jadi potensi apa yang paling bisa dimanfaatkan dengan baik untuk pada saat ini. Jadi potensi yang bisa kita manfaatkan itu adalah ikan gabus. Jadi kalau dengan kita mengembangkan ikan gabus di, di perairan kita, uh, artinya perairannya harus basah, artinya gabutnya harus basah untuk bisa melihara ikan gabus. gitu. Jadi ikan gabus ini bisa hidup di uh, bumbung air yang kita buat. gitu. Nah, saya pikir kalau ikan gabusnya hidup dengan baik, berarti um, potensi, mas, artinya alamnya terjaga. Saya pikir gitu, itu korelasi yang jelas. Wah, wow, menarik banget nih. Hmm. Udah dilakukan sampai sejauh mana prosesnya sejauh ini? Uh, kita melakukan, karena potensi sudah kelihatan, jadi diperlukan dari ketawal. Jadi gimana cara merubah ikan gabus jadi albumin gitu. Albumin harganya lebih mahal. Nah, akhirnya diputuskan uh, kita harus bangun laboratorium kecil di Siak untuk mengubah uh, ikan gabus jadi albumin. Nah, proses ini sedang berjalan sekarang. Laboratoriumnya udah selesai, udah jadi. Sayangnya karena corona kita tidak bisa melanjutkan proses ini di Siak. Proses ini akhirnya kita lanjutkan di Jakarta. Jadi riset awal terhadap ikan gabus itu telah dilakukan di Jakarta. Nah, tapi kawan-kawan di Siak tidak tinggal diam, kami uh, lakukan uh, pembinaan terhadap calon-calon kelompok pembudidaya ikan gabus. Jadi ada dua desa yang jadikan pilot project untuk uh, pembudidaya ikan gabus ini nanti. Gitu. 
Jadi ya, sudah ada laboratorium sedang uh-huh. menyiapkan budidaya. Ya. Apalagi yang dibutuhkan nih dari teman-teman yang bergabung di webinar hari ini? Ada yang ingin diharapkan uh, juga mungkin? Ya, gini Bu Gita. Uh, kami merasa bahwa siak itu punya potensi yang luar biasa. Nah, uh, dan kami sadari juga bahwa kami tidak punya kemampuan di situ untuk melakukan uh, apa penggalian potensi. Sementara potensinya sangat banyak. Ikat gabus ini, potensi albumin ini kami dapat bahwa, karena ada tenaga ahli yang datang dari agama salah satunya yang memberitahu kami ini potensi yang luar biasa dimiliki siak tapi tidak termanfaatkan. Selama ini terabaikan ikat gabus itu yang ditangkap dan juga mentah. Saya bayangkan seandainya ada banyak tenaga ahli yang datang siak, saintis, ilmuwan gitu ya, yang datang ke siak dan menggali potensi-potensi yang ada di siak. Saya bayangkan ini potensi yang kita punya bakal banyak lagi ditemukan dan bisa dimanfaatkan untuk kesejahteraan masyarakat tentunya tetap menjaga lingkungan jadi proses-proses tetap menjaga lingkungan ini sebuah hal yang luar biasa seandainya ada tenaga ahli baru yang mau terlibat dalam pekerjaan baru di siap begitu kita tapi seandainya eh, apa lagi yang bisa eh, kita harapkan gitu selain tenaga ahli kami pikir kami juga butuh mitra untuk bekerja sama yeah. untuk membuka pikiran dan wawasan kami untuk memberi pengetahuan baru kami butuh investor tentunya butuh banyak uang untuk melakukan kegiatan ini dan setidaknya sepaling kecilnya kawan-kawan bisa jadi konsumen kami nanti seandainya produk ini udah jadi dan pasti jadi siap semangat banget nih kira-kira yeah. apa ada hal terakhir yang mau disampaikan sebelum kita tutup nih Uh, saya ingat sebuah cita-cita LTKL dan kabupaten yang tergabung di LTKL bahwa pada tahun 2030 nanti kita ingin ada 6 juta hektar hutan terjaga 2 juta hektar gambut uh, bagus lagi dan bisa termanfaat untuk masyarakat dan 1 juta petani sejahtera melalui proses-proses yang uh, menjaga lingkungan ini sebuah cita-cita besar yang butuh tangan banyak yang butuh kekuatan besar dan semangat yang enggak enggak kecil juga jadi butuh banyak orang untuk mengerjakan ini siap gitu. semoga itu jadi inspirasi untuk semua thank you so much terima kasih banyak Mas Gon Mas Mus Rahmat from Siak District in Riau Province he will be available for the Q&A but he has given you all homework if you want to be part of the journey you can come and become an expert you can be an investor you can be a partner at the very least you can be a consumer for this sustainable product hopefully this is all Um, sounds like a good idea for you and you can also join SIAK in their journey towards green and being a sustainable district. Now that we have visited West Kalimantan, we have also visited Sumatra, we are going to go global. We have speakers coming from uh, parts of the world. We have Ibu Nurdiana Darus, the head of corporate affairs and sustainability in Unilever Indonesia. And we also have Pak Sanjeev Lewis, the investment director for Southeast Asia for Sale Ventures. And last but not least, we have Amy Duchel, the senior scientist in the climate change, energy, and low carbon development team in C4. So all of the panelists is going to give response to what was presented from Sintang and Siak, but we are also going to have a warm fireside chat with the panelists just to know from their perspective what would be important, what is relevant, and how should we go about nature-based economy. Before we start, I'd like to actually provide the time and floor to the panelists to give two minutes opening statement, just so everybody get more familiar with your work and uh, the awesomeness that you bring to the ta- to the table or to the virtual screen tonight. Um, we'd like to actually give the first turn to Ibu Ade. So uh, we'll cue your slide, two minutes. Uh, go ahead, book time and floor is yours. Thank you, Gita. Can you hear me well? Yep, perfect. All right, great. Well, thank you for having me here. It's evening in Jakarta. I know it's afternoon elsewhere in the world. So let me just start very quickly. If you could have my slide up for me. 
Thank you. A very simple slide, I hope, um, for everybody to see. So as a company that manufactures beauty and personal care, home care, and food and refreshment products, Unilever, our aim is to grow our business whilst decoupling our environmental footprint from our growth and increase our positive social impact. Where we source our agriculture products of black soybeans, coconut sugar, and palm oil from, we take a three-pronged approach to our nature-based economy, where people Empowerment is at the center of this approach. And why is this important? It's important that we need to prove to our growers that sustainable production and protection will generate sustainable livelihood. And we assist them to be on this journey together by fostering inclusivity of the smallholder producers. We support the skills and development of the next generation. And we also support the women in these communities. We also ensure that our suppliers and smallholder par partners use their natural capital responsibly. We focus our sustainability strategy on our direct supply chain. We accelerate and scale sustainable sourcing initiative. We also assist farmers to improve their productivity and yield. And at the same time, we introduce and promote conservation and restoration activities under the Regenerative Agriculture Code. And we execute our sustainability strategy in strategic landscapes and or jurisdictions by focusing on an entire jurisdiction rather than individual suppliers within that jurisdiction. The jurisdictional approach offers the potential to holistically accelerate and scale sustainable commodity production initiatives across the jurisdictions, hence minimizing leakage. But this would only succeed when supportive sustainable commitment policy framework and agreed governance tools are in place across the jurisdiction. This is a huge undertaking that could only be executed in gotong royong, which means together, hand in hand, and in partnerships across stakeholders. As a company, we know that we cannot pull this off alone. Hence, we collaborate with many stakeholders, including the national and subnational government, CSOs, and many implementing partners on the ground. Thank you, Gita. Thank you, Bu Ade. Right on cue and the final word being very powerful, which is gotong royong and why we're here and celebrating our differences and the way that we work with each other. Now, I'll like to give the floor to Sanjeev um, coming from Singapore uh, to just shed some light on what Sail Venture is and your priority. Thanks, Gita. Um, I'd like to put up the slides. Um, yeah, so I, I hope some of our experience in sustainable land use investments uh, will be uh, of interest to the, to the speak, other speakers uh, from Sintang and Siak, but also you know, the wider audience. So Sale is a boutique investment manager. Uh, we're focused solely on long-term value investments. Uh, our team's belief is that uh, patient capital that considers financial returns, but allows time for environmental and social returns to develop Will ultimately outperform strategies that are only uh, only valuing short-term profits and purely commercial gains. Uh, so, and Green Fund, which is one of the funds we manage, is uh, one of the purest sort of expressions of this belief. Uh, the fund's initial investors, uh, which include the government government of Norway, the Global Environment Facility, and uh, thanks to Ade, uh, Unilever is our first corporate uh, partner. So, thank you. Uh, place they place a very high value on the environmental returns that can be generated when their capital is deployed with clear expectation for success, which is measured not only through you know, operational uh, success, but also through the lens of environmental and social uh, performance. Uh, so with the mandate uh, that we have to transition agricultural commodity supply chains in the tropical forest zones, uh, to more sustainable and deforestation free models and green is supporting long-term investment that is intended to be inclusive for rural communities and yet with uh, sufficient scale to be globally relevant in terms of climate change mitigation uh, so what is crucial for us with and green is that we don't focus on simply avoiding risk uh, which is what we see happening in the banking sector you know they stop financing the production of sensitive commodities like beef or soy palm oil, rubber, timber, while they continue financing the trading, refining, and processing of these same export commodities. So this type of disengagement by the financial sector makes the problem of rural economic development and especially sustainable land use so much harder by actually choking out funding where it's needed the most. Uh, so that's why Green strives to use our landscape approach 
uh, to showcase loans where banks can replicate our model and finance sustainable production uh, while still earning a decent risk adjusted return for themselves. Uh, so thank you, Kita, and I'll hand it back to you. Thanks, Sanjeev. So that was critical in terms of not only a, like not avoiding a risk, but actually trying to find alternative ways to address the problem that everybody realizes, which is at the end of the day, all this good intention requires resources, requires investment. So I'd like to give the floor to Amy now, coming from C4, also our co-host for this event. Um, also two minutes, there's no special privilege for co-host Amy, unfortunately. <laughs> so the time and floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Gita, and thank you everyone for having us here. Um, we'll look at the slide. So what I wanna talk about a little bit is from a research perspective and, and really this need to, to monitor and evaluate jurisdictional approaches. And Ibuade gave a great definition of jurisdictional approaches, um, you know, as these holistic approaches to forest and land use governance, um, really government at the core, but also very clear opportunities for partnerships with private sector, um, as well as indigenous people and local communities. So what we've been trying to do for the last several years, um, and this is really in partnership, I have happen to be sitting here, but Earth Innovation Institute, the Governor's Climate and Forest Task Force, my colleague Sueta Petero from C4, her emails there. I mean, many, many people involved in this. But what we've been trying to do is really understand the commitments that jurisdictions are making across the tropics. We started at the provincial level, which you can see on the left with the Governor's Climate and Forest Task Force. Um, 35 tropical states and provinces in green, many countries, um, as well as a few others in blue that are not members but doing innovative approaches, um, looking at commitments and then action and progress on those commitments um, by assessing different elements. And then we moved through collaboration with LTKL to the district level in Indonesia and um, in the context of their regional competitiveness framework brought some of that global learning from the provincial level experience in many countries to what they were doing um, through a very bottom-up multi-stakeholder approach, um, which has been very interesting. I'll talk about a bit later. And then I would just like to say that, you know, also what we're trying to do is, is really provide some critical and independent thinking about jurisdictional approaches um, through peer reviewed studies and, and literature. And we're, we're launching a special issue, um, jurisdictional approaches to sustain sustainability in the tropics through frontiers. Almost all the articles are in there. One on Indonesia coming soon by Francis Seymour and colleagues. Um, but that really tries to give a critical assessment of, of these approaches so far and what is needed um, in terms of data analysis tools and policies and actions to, to move them forward. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. And it's great to uh, actually, ma uh, we managed to move sort of the milestones from province going to the district. And today is a special day for Sintang. We saw a lot of questions already pouring in about the proof of, you know, Commitment is easy when once you start to implementation, uh, it gets difficult. So this profile highlights the need to actually keep reporting on that progress. So we'll talk about that a little bit um, throughout the session. Now we go to the uh, exciting part. Um, it's called rapid fire, but hopefully it doesn't involve any fire, right? Not good for the forest, guys. Um, now we'd like to actually go back to Amy and ask in terms of Answering to the plea. So this first segment is talking about responding to what Sintang and Siak have presented. Uh, Pak Bupati and Mas Bun is uh, waiting patiently for you to maybe shed some light. Their plea is to have strong, stronger relationship with the technical experts community. Maybe C4 can suggest some ideas on that, uh, especially on the nature-based economy side. Great. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Gita. I, I think the question, you know, who is the expert here? That's what came to mind when I was looking at the question. You know, um, is it the scientists, the technocrats, or is it actually the people who live and work in these landscapes and, and know them better than anyone else? And so I think yeah. um, there was a really wonderful session uh, yesterday. If you haven't seen it, it was, it was called um, Rights-Based Ecosystem Approaches. Mm, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> watch it if you haven't seen it. I mean, it was co-organized by C4, so I'm biased, but it had the tenure facility and forest people's program. 
And it really raised a lot of issues about nature-based solutions and, and went very nicely through the risks associated with nature-based solutions. Climate risks, if we're using these solutions to avoid reducing our dependence on fossil fuel. Biodiversity risks, if we're actually planting trees over natural ecosystems. Risks for local people, livelihood and rights at, at the heart of, of what can be a really top-down approach. And so I think from my point of view, what, what we need to really be doing together as experts at many levels is bringing the nuance mm. to the based solutions um, so that they aren't simple. In fact, we need to move them forward. We are in a climate and biodiversity crisis, um, but, but we, we can't make them too simple. They're not, and they never have been. And so I, I think that's the role for, for all of us, in fact, as experts, to, to provide the nuance to these solutions so that we are ensuring ecosystem integrity mm -hmm. and rights and livelihoods for local people. Yeah, thanks, Amy. So in terms of that complexity, um, I guess it's an open arm um, extension to the subnationals uh, that are willing to also collaborate with technical experts. So a thumbs up, Pak Bupati, katanya oke okay kalau mau kerjasama nih sama banyak technical expert untuk membantu SIAK, eh, Sintang, dan juga kepada Mas Gun tadi yang meminta untuk lebih erat kolaborasinya dengan lebih banyak lagi ahli supaya inovasi-inovasi tidak berhenti di albumin dan gambu, gam, ikan gabus saja, tapi bisa menemukan banyak potensi lainnya. Silahkan sekarang, um, we will move to Sanjif actually try to think about ways of looking at sail ventures and where does sail venture position itself coming from the solution or the proposed business model that was presented by Siak and Sintang? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I mean, let me start by saying we, we believe strongly that you know if events investors generally will increasingly start to value what I talked about earlier, both the financial and environmental returns. But what Anne Green is doing, um, you know, with, with sale as a manager, is investing ahead of that sort of fundamental shift in how investment is, is done. Uh, but we still use the same commercial lens as financial investors so that we can make it replicable, right? Um, so Anne Green at the moment is trying to do a bit of sort of trying to demystify investment in natural capital yeah. assets, uh, particularly uh, at the primary production end of the value chain. Uh, this is where we believe, you know, you have the best opportunity to impact the rural communities uh, and farmers while having the most direct influence on forest conservation and other ecosystem preservation outcomes. But this is also where the perceived risk for investors is the highest, both financial and reputational risks are elevated as you move upstream in these value chains, particularly with commodities like timber, rubber, palm, which are historically so closely linked with deforestation. And this is why investing in sort of integrated models that demonstrate uh, the viability of sustainable land use at scale is core to what Anne Green is doing with its funding. Um, we are believers in the future re-rating of the value of natural resources uh, and not purely for their short-term mm. extractive value uh, or current traded commodity values, rather, the models like those presented today from Sintang and Siak have the potential to illustrate that these communities' ecosystems hold value that is far greater than the narrow set of you know, cash crops or forest commodities that they can produce or contain under the sort of business as usual thinking. Yeah. And so by yeah. safely facilitating early investment um, in these communities and thereby encouraging the innovation, the entrepreneurship that they talked about, and Green is also helping to de-risk these business models a bit, uh, and then starting to gain acceptance, um, and perhaps they haven't been yet, you know, developed at full scale. So, uh, so that's how they'll be sort of become ex um, become accepted and become financeable in the long term. No, that's in super interesting in terms of um, not also leaving behind the one who needs the most, but sort of finding ways to upscale that quicker by also collaborating with others. Now, maybe Bu Ade, um, coming from the private sector side, um, what do you think, like looking at Unilever experience, any thought on the presented idea? Can, can it be a visible business model, Bu? 
Mm, so I think if you know Unilever, we're a bunch of really optimists, <laughs> people in the company. So we actually yeah. already work in many jurisdictions, Gita, where we source sustainable agriculture products from. So for instance, for palm oil, we actually work in Siak in Riau and Aceh Tamiang, which are two of the members of LTKL, of course. West uh, Kota Waringin Barat, Surian in Central Kalimantan, um, Tapanuli Selatan, of course, in North Sumatra. But also for our coconut sugar programs, we source from North Sulawesi, Central Kalimantan. Uh, we have a cook stove optimization program um, that is in uh, East, Central, and West Java, and also Lampung, but also our black soybean programs, where we work with 20 plus districts in Central East um, Java um, and across Yogyakarta as well. So we work directly with cooperatives mostly, and sometimes we work with vendors that source directly from cooperatives. We work hand in hand with our partners to apply the Unilever Sustainable Agriculture Code um, to ensure that the natural capital uh, is cultivated um, responsibly. We are also introducing and promoting conservation restoration efforts within uh, the Regenerative Agriculture Code. This new code will build upon the existing uh, USAC. It will include details of farming practices and help to rebuild critical resources. So we we believe in uh, Gotong Royong. We believe in still uh, providing sustainable livelihood for our, our partners, our growers. And we work hand in hand with them um, and also with our vendors and our, uh, our partners on the ground, our NGOs as well. So we protect the if you want to call it, we protect the investment, right? We protect the investment to make sure that it is viable. It is, it is a proven case of protection, production protection, and providing sustainable livelihood. So both looking at economic, like your, your slide before, yeah, it's like a donut <laughs> approach almost, where ecology is the one that is actually upholding the rest, the economy, and also the social aspect. Thank you, Bu Ade. We're actually going to combine the next segment for the rapid fire session with the Q&A because we have tons of Q&A. So I will make I want to make sure that we are also interacting with audience. So the, the, the second part is actually looking at um, a question from Fabri that are asking nature based economy is a good principle. And um, this is a question to all of the panelists, um, starting from Sanjeev, maybe uh, whether it's true that nature-based economy is a good idea and is a good has good principles, has good, mo good motives in it. Uh, what are the global trends that you see upcoming in terms of looking at nature-based economy as well as maybe investing on jurisdictions? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, uh, certainly. Um, I mean, we're hearing the word nature-based solutions, natural capital more and more. Uh, it's becoming part of the vocabulary uh, if you're in the sustainable development world. Uh, you know, if you open the paper every day, you know, every week or so, you see a new company, a uh, new oil and gas company, a new bank, a new so-and-so making a new or renewed pledge. Um, but what you don't see often is those pledges uh, turning into to investment. Um, so, but a lot of those pledges are indeed anchored, you know, by investments in nature-based solutions. So if they want to reduce their carbon footprint, you know, a big part of that solution is natural capital investments. But you still see a huge gap between that ambition uh, and the real investment. And that, that's, the, that's the real problem right now. Um, and, and trying to demonstrate that models uh, of, you know, sort of integrated models where you can invest in sustainable production of, you know, relevant commodities, but at the same time support conservation, support community livelihoods, uh, and all of, do all of that sort of profitably and at, and at, uh, and at scale. That's what needs to be done, and that's what actors like us and you know Unilever and other partners are, are trying to achieve. And I think you know Sintang's efforts, uh, CX efforts to do this are, are uh, you know are should be applauded, and I think are are relevant and and really pointed in the right direction. That's a good news, <laughs> definitely. So um, in terms of uh, looking at it from another angle, I also saw some questions that has been pouring in uh, looking at proof, proof of concept, right? Like how, how do you justify this? Um, there's a question from Noyara, uh, a question from Binaya, a question from Lambda. Um, a lot of questions are all all pointing to how do you report on progress? How do you prove that actually you are moving from commitment to 
actual implementation on the ground and you are being truthful. So there is sort of more transparency and more accountability. How do you respond to this, Amy? Maybe coming from C4 side, um, how, how, do you, how should jurisdictions respond to this growing trend? Um, is, is your study intended to help them address this? Yeah, so I think it's a it's an important point. What what we in fact tried to do it, it it relates to what Sanjeev was saying is is really through helping make progress transparent and available, attracting investment to these jurisdictions that that were you know at different stages of progress. In fact, um, not just the high performers, um, but but also those that are at intermediate stages of progress um, and, and what kind of investment might be needed to move them forward. So what we did was sort of, this, and this was again with the Governor's Climate and Forest Task Force, it was at the provincial level, but a global overview of the commitments, um, progress, deforestation trends, kind of all, all kinds of different information. And, and we rated um, with um, stakeholders in, in the jurisdictions, um, these different elements of progress related to land use planning, respect for local rights, um, uh, initiatives for sustainable agriculture, robust monitoring systems, all these different things. And, and it really gave actually ratings of early, intermediate, and advanced with evidence. And, yeah. and the idea that we have these two page profiles um, that, that show that very clearly and they've been validated by stakeholders in the jurisdiction and they're out there now. And, and what's nice mm. about we, we then applied something similar, as, as Gita knows, and we'll, we'll show later, in the context of, of the LTKL um, member districts. And using a different approach, but again, yeah. the beauty of this is that it's, a st it's standardized. Um, it gives a nice overview of the place for people who don't know it, including investors. Um, but it's really based on local context and the process behind the generation of the information um, in fact, in the LTKL case was quite participatory and a multi-stakeholder collaboration itself. So it's, it, that's the point, you know, sort yeah. of standardized information that global, the global community can digest and, and sort of, you know, it's, it's not sort of all over the place. It's sort of a standard mm -hmm. indicators, but really based on, on the local um, needs and participation and, additional indicators that are important for the, the district or, or province themselves. Yeah. So in terms of uh, those folks who have uh, um, showed questions or showed interest um, in finding out more in terms of how districts are progressing, how is it different than business as usual, this profile, as Amy mentioned, the study that C4 uh, have started two years ago and have continued with our membership are supposedly helping you to better read that in a more standardized, more neat, and Sintang is here to launch theirs tonight. Um, now, going back to maybe Bu Ade, there are questions uh, from Siti, also from Binaya, um, how nature-based solutions is the, the, the big thing right now, right? And how do you incorporate that into the actual practice of working with farmers, working with small, medium scale industries, working with uh, women, um, as well as what do you think this pandemic have done to that relationship? Mm, okay, thanks, Gita. That's a very important question, especially relating it to what's going on right now. So in palm oil, um, we work a lot with our partners and independent small moreholder farmers as well. We work to get them to be RSPO certified. So um, we actually purchase uh, RSPO smallholders credits, creating a market of smallholder grown palm while incentivizing and supporting the livelihoods of these independent smallholders. In 2019, we purchased um, around 40,000 tons of independent smallholder CSPO and CSPKO from 30 independent smallholder farmer groups, representing around almost 7,000 independent smallholder farmers across Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. Um, we've been, since 2017, we've been um, one of the largest buyers of independent smallholder um, farmer RSPO credits. But in uh, our black soybeans programs, we also work with various cooperatives. Um, and one example is we work with uh, S uh, Koprasi 
KSU Mekar Mas in Kulon Progo in Yogyakarta. We started this collaboration since 2011. So wow. we, provide, we provide cooperatives in planting assistance and market guarantee for the black soybean uh, crops. This helps to increase their income, which in turn improves their welfare and the livelihood, of course. So, um, and then in the Women Empowerment Program, and this is one of the one of the most important programs when we go to communities, when we go to small, medium enterprises, is that we also develop the women that are involved in the process. So we don't just work with the men, we work with yeah. the ibu-ibu, with the ladies ibu-ibu as well. Ladies. Yes, Usually but, they're better, yeah, in keeping money and stuff, right? Yeah, so, but then, you know, we have lots of gentlemen here on the call as well. So, but since 20, uh, since 2003, the Unilever Indonesia Foundations have been working a lot with the Black Soybean Farmers Development Program. And this is involved in helping the ladies to really process the sorting of the black soybeans. But in 20, uh, in 2007, we've started to also uh, deploy this Women Empowerment Program Saraswati. Now this is a much, this is a very interesting program because then we also look into not just the economic side of being a woman in the community, but also their self-esteem, their entrepreneurial skills as well. So we actually have modules to help them to be able to speak up. There's a one farmer, there's a one woman Gita who you know, was so shy in mm. the beginning of the program. And at the end of the program, she actually wrote an article in the local newspaper. And she was so proud she was able to get to that stage. It's, uh, you know, I mean, you, That's you can- That's amazing. Really yeah, and you, you can really shed tears yeah. listening to these women too. <laughs> Thank you, Buare. Such an important experience. Now, the last thing that we'd like to ask you and the audience like to ask you, because uh, it's amazing. Everybody are looking um, at the same thing. Um, in terms of coming from your own perspective and working with jurisdictions such as Sintang and Siak, um, what do you think is the most important pillars, right? Pak Gusti mentioned deforestation is complex, a lot of agents that needs to be influenced. Uh, Suitra uh, from Thailand is also um, questioning in terms of actually working together. Noyara is also um, asking this um, couple of other uh, uh, questions as well, but similar uh, in tone, including uh, coming from Indonesia and elsewhere. Um, I'd like to give the floor back to Sanjeev actually to maybe share uh, with us your perspective. Um, what is it that the jurisdictions need to prep for if they want to tap into sustainable investment for the nature-based solution? Yeah, I mean, obviously this is um, tremendously important, you know, the, the work that LPKIL is doing, um, you know, that, that, you know, the pillars that you outlined earlier today, you know, it really speaks to, to what we require as an investor. Um, I mean, we, we ourselves have a jurisdictional eligibility criteria, criteria for our fund before we invest. So we look at this um, issue, you know, frequently uh, before we, we invest. Um, you know, and those pillars, you know, are, are really mirrors of what we look for. So we want, you know, first, you know, what what Sintang and Siak and all the Eltekal districts are, are doing, which is developing, you know, that ambition for a green growth plan, sustainable land use, you know, coordinated planning, um, you know, good good ideas about what should be conserved, um, you know, what areas should be designated, you know, for proper conservation, yeah. um, the rights of people. All of these things are intended to do one thing. It's really to make things safe, transparent, you know, we've used these same words. And by de-risking, I mean, to use a finance word, you, you're de-risking the idea of investing in these uh, in these areas, in these sectors. Uh, and by doing that kind of planning, it avoids what I think is a terrible thing that's happened in the past, which is, you know, the easiest thing to do is that, okay, let's just give all our natural resources to one type of company and let's just use yeah. them all, right? And so you get one type of business happening mm. for a long time. And it actually, in the long term, it's risky for the government, it's risky for the people, and, and it's certainly very risky for the, for the environment because eventually that, that resource is used up and then you have nothing else left. Uh, yeah. So what, yeah. what we want to see is that, that sort of enabling environment, which includes you know, uh, all these pillars that you talked about and allows you know, the Unilevers, the researchers, the technical experts, um, I mean, we talked about it earlier. It's okay for projects to have different stages of, of development and different 
levels of risk. Uh, what I found coming from a finance, I was a finance guy for a long time, for 16 years in, in this region, before I came to sort of sustainable development. And I thought the, the problem was the lack of money. Uh, I thought, you know, no one was investing and that's why that's the problem. So we raise money and then it'll solve the problem. And the problem is not money. The problem is there's loads of money, but they don't know where to invest and they don't know, they're, they're afraid to invest the money. Yeah. And, and some of them are very risky and some of them are kind of medium risky like we are. And some of them are totally risk averse, like maybe banks nowadays. Mm. And it's okay. So, and that's the, that's the challenge. We, we bring projects along and de-risk them, you know, along the chain and eventually money will flow into these projects. But the, the first, first job is, I think, this enabling environment and that ambition to use, um, use your natural resources um, responsibly and sustainably. Thanks, Sanjeev. In terms of enabling conditions going to Bu Ade, uh, what are the enabling conditions that needs to be there in order for companies to be interested in working with uh, jurisdictions like Sintang or SIAC or other sustainable jurisdictions across the world? Okay, thanks, Sita. So I touched on this um, in my initial presentation. So we, we, we like to work in jurisdictions and jurisdictions that um, are also with the same vision uh, as us, right? So by focusing on one jurisdiction and having elements of supervisions, the right policy um, that actually governs the sustainable production and the protection, it gives that extra assurance for companies such as Unilever to be able to say, yes, this is where we would like to work with because we've got mm. partners on the ground. We have the support and we have the, the great collaborations with the subnational government. And the, the subnational government also has that commitment to SDGs. And the subnational governments also actually then articulate some of the national programs at the district level, such as the SDGs and also the uh, uh, the uh, Rencana Aksi uh, Kabupaten Kelapa uh, Bersal. Yes, the I national think. action plan. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's sustainable I, I, palm oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know that, I know that uh, Sintang is actually. Uh, they're you know, the first. Actually, they're the first actually, district. Exactly. Yeah. So they have to, do that, to be at the district level, right? So yeah. that kind of support, that kind of commitment from jurisdictions such as Sintang and Siak is it gives us a good feeling about you know working in that environment, and you know I mean we would with, you know I think not just Unilever but other FMCGs and other companies would love to see more of that yeah. um, so that it is it is a gotong royong and it mm. is possible it is so possible to to have sustainable production and protection I can't say enough about it yeah. how exciting it is <laughs> thank you Buade. great to see that it's super exciting now we're going to hear from Amy later um, during the special uh, launch for the um Profile, but now Pak Bupati ada beberapa pertanyaan nih buat Bapak dan juga mungkin buat Mas Gun nih ya. Kira-kira kalau untuk Pak Bupati satu pertanyaan saja Pak, mungkin boleh satu atau dua menit begitu um, dari sisi pemerintah Sintang sendiri. Pertanyaannya ada dari banyak orang sih Pak. Jadi saya summarize aja, saya ringkas. Nomor satu. Sintang Lestari ini dananya dari mana Pak? Itu pertanyaannya yang pertama. Terus yang nomor dua tadi pertanyaannya adalah apa sih yang sebetulnya betul-betul sudah dilakukan oleh Sintang untuk memproteksi uh, kearifan lokalnya? Boleh disebutkan mungkin satu atau dua peraturan contoh saja Pak. Boleh Pak mungkin dua menit ke depan. Silakan. Baik, terima kasih Ibu Gita. Selamat malam semua. Uh, seperti kita ketahui bahwa Sintang ini sangat luas ya, 21.635 km persegi. Nah, ini dibagi dua bagian yang besar, yaitu satu kawasan hutan, hampir 59 persen, kemudian 49 persennya itu, 41 persennya itu, itu adalah non-kawasan hutan. Nah, pembangunan di Sintang ini selalu bersentuhan dengan sumber daya ini. Ya. Tidak bisa dihindari. Ya. Nah, oleh karena itu, uh, uh, perlu sekali ya, uh, uh, bagaimana kita supaya ini bisa uh, uh, lestari. gitu Karena uh, sumber daya pembangunan itu, ya modal pembangunan di Sintang ini selalu dua ini. Mm-hmm. Bersentuhan berbasis kawasan hutan, berbasis lahan ini. Nah, maka Jadi, kita perlu perlu yeah. uh, suatu aturan perencanaan mm-hmm. yang kolaborasi yang baik sehingga setiap kita uh, membangun ekonomi masyarakat ya Kabupaten Sintang ini 
ini bisa lestari itu satu nah, itu ya nah nah kemudian uh, partisipasi apa yang kita uh, harapkan dari Uh, semua stakeholder masyarakat masyarakat ya. Iya untuk kearifan lokal pak ya, mungkin ya. boleh spesifik Dari peraturannya. Ke, kearifan lokal kita kita akomodir ya ini sangat 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 potensial. Misalnya salah satu uh, pembukaan lahan berbasis kearifan lokal. Ini memang uh, usaha masyarakat selama ini ya. ya yang selalu kita kita pertahankan ya. Uh, tentu ini diatur melalui aturan. Ya, berupa peraturan bu- bupati ya bagaimana tata cara pembukaan lahan yang arif dan uh, arif lokal itu ya itu yang kita 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 atur Siap. dalam peraturan itu sehingga betul-betul nanti ketika masyarakat uh, melakukan usaha-usaha ekonominya ya terkait dengan sumber daya lahan ini tidak me- merusak ini tetap lestari gitu ini yang yang siap itu yang peraturan bupati ya pak ya, ya berarti ya bupati. untuk pembukaan lahan tanpa bakar siap terima ya. kasih banyak bapak nanti kita akan gabung lagi dengan bapak untuk uh, launching profil sintang sekarang mas gun terakhir mungkin ya pertanyaannya buat mas gun nih kalau dari perspektif masyarakat sipil bagaimana caranya memastikan bahwa ini dari pak gusti dan beberapa pertanyaan lainnya memastikan bahwa teman-teman di desa nih yang betul-betul masyarakat itu juga betul-betul betul sepakat dengan rencana-rencana yang sudah banyak dibicarakan ini. Ya, terima kasih Pak Gita, semuanya selamat malam. Yang pasti kalau masyarakat kenapa mau ikut uh, perencanaan yang sudah dilakukan, yang pasti harus ada sosialisasi yang bagus. Uh, semua program asal berdampak buat masyarakat, masyarakat pasti mau. Nah, kalau di Riau sendiri kita disiak, asal-asal muasal kita memang memanfaatkan alam. Jadi kalau alam terjaga kita pasti tahu kehidupan keberlanjutan kehidupan kita pasti lebih baik. Kita merasakan sendiri kok bagaimana perubahan alam berdampak terhidup, terhadap hidup kita, kebakaran yeah. hutan itu berdampak terhadap hidup kita, kerusakan air itu berdampak terhadap hidup kita, kerusakan tanah bertambah berdampak sama hidup kita itu terasa. Tapi kalau masyarakat itu diberi pemahaman yang bagus, diberi, dilihatkan bahwa ini suatu peluang yang baik yang bisa dimanfaatkan, mm. saya pikir itu pasti diterima. Yang gabus Tinggal, ini sudah diterima sama masyarakat, Mas? Sudah, kan? Jadi kita sedang siapkan dua kelompok pembudidaya. Jadi jangan khawatir, kita nggak bakal ngambil gabus dari alam. Kita nggak bakal Siap, eksploitasi. Di budidaya ya, tadi Bapak-Ibu yang bertanya ya. soal gabus ini bakal ya. di budidaya, bukan dikerok begitu ya? Bukan, bukan. Walau itu kita tahu Siap. itu satu potensi, tapi kita sadari bahwa itu potensi yang bakal bisa habis kalau terus-terus diambil. Misalnya setiap hari kita butuh 150 kilo ikan untuk dijadikan albumin. Itu nggak hmm. akan cukup kalau Siap. diambil dari alam. Jadi harus ada sistem yang kita buat untuk bisa melakukan itu dengan baik. Itu nggak cukup satu desa, nanti akhirnya harus beberapa desa. Jadi ini suatu program yang bikin berdampak banyak buat masyarakat. Siap. Oke, okay. ada tantangan, mungkin semenit tantangan yang masih dihadapi saat sejauh ini, Mas Gun? Ya, ini, Dari Mbak Siti ini pertanyaannya. Iya, pasti begini. Um, apa? Ada Ini cara baru. Ini cara baru. Oh, orang masih bingung. Gimana sih cara membudidaya ikan gabus? Ikan gabus setahu ini kami nggak pernah budidaya ikan gabus. Ikan gabus itu kami ambil dari alam, tersedia, kami tinggal ambil, kami tinggal tangkap, nggak jadi masalah. Jadi masyarakat perlu diberikan uh, cara pengetahuan yang baik, cara membudidaya ikan gabus, terus cara pengolahannya, cara, ada kan, uh, bukan, masyarakat itu diberikan pemahaman cara mengolah dasar. Jadi ikan itu bukan Siap. langsung dijadikan albumin, itu mereka nggak bisa. Jadi pengolah dasarnya mereka bisa. Jadi Siap. awal dari pertama banget didampingin gitu ya Mas ya, gitu. Siap. Gitu. Terima kasih banyak Mas Gun sudah bergabung dari Siak, dari Riau. Itu di belakang Makasih. fotonya tuh kayaknya saya yang lagi naik perahu tuh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you juga tadi Pak Bupati. Kita akan kembali Pak Bupati mau punya kabar baik buat Bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu yang sudah bergabung, ladies and gentlemen, one of the special moment for tonight as well, the official launch of the first district profile in LTKL membership. This is a profile that will answer all of your questions in the Q&A. How is Sintang progressing? How is this going to be measured? And this is a, um, a collaborative work with C4 as well as the most important actor at the district itself. Go ahead, Pak Bupati. Time and floor is yours. Uh, baik. Uh, pertama, tentu saya berterima kasih dan sangat apresiasi ya kerja baik dari uh, seluruh uh, teman-teman, termasuk 
uh, NGO ya yang membantu Kabupaten Sintang ya di Kabupaten ini ya sampai ada bersama uh, ya uh, di Kabupaten Sintang sehingga uh, bisa uh, menghasilkan sesuatu yang 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 bisa kita 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 tampilkan di di, di dunia ya gitu ya. Nah ini suatu kerja yang sangat baik menurut saya ya hasil-hasil yang sudah dicapai ya sesuatu yang menurut saya sudah uh, luar biasa ya nah, kemudian uh, tentu ini uh, akan bisa me memberi suatu uh, gambaran kepada uh, masyarakat luas bahwa uh, Kabupaten Sintang betul-betul uh, sudah uh, sudah mulai ya uh, membangun ya, ekonomi masyarakat ya berbasis apa uh, uh, kelestarian lingkungan nah, ini ini banyak hal yang sudah dibuat ya banyak perencanaan perencanaan banyak inisiasi inisiasi yang sudah dibuat oleh teman teman ya berkolaborasi ya sehingga uh, bisa uh, bagaimana uh, uh, bisa me, me, menghasilkan sesuatu yang yang sangat baik untuk masa depan ya kabupaten kita sendiri untuk masa depan lingkungan kita sendiri misalnya ya, kita sudah uh, menyusun ya satu perencanaan ya bagaimana ke depan itu uh, dalam perencanaan itu betul-betul uh, uh, mengatur ya nah, bagaimana kita harus berinvestasi ya bagaimana kita harus mengelola sumber daya alam yang ada di Kabupaten Sintang ini nah kemudian uh, nanti ya tentu akan akan diatur melalui aturan-aturan atau uh, uh, persyaratan-persyaratan uh, perizinan yang Ya, sangat 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 apa namanya sangat sangat selektif ya, sehingga betul-betul dalam pelaksanaan pembangunan ya yang tujuannya untuk betul-betul uh, membangun ekonomi masyarakat Kabupaten Sintang ya ini betul-betul me, me, melihat bahwa uh, berbasis uh, kelestarian atau sustainable dari sumber daya yang kita kelola itu jadi itu sebenarnya yang 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 sudah sudah kita capai ya uh, ini uh, secara teknis bisa kita lihat nanti ya Memang ini sesuatu yang harus kita kita kembangkan terus ini. Nah, jadi kami betul-betul ini ya, ekonomi hijau itu merupakan suatu fungsi yang harus kita capai. Saya kira itu Ibu yang bisa saya sampaikan. Terima kasih Bapak. Mungkin uh, Amy, you can go next. Maybe two minutes uh, from C4 perspective and this uh, collaboration. Great. Uh, thank you so much. It's just such a privilege to hear that you know, this work is appreciated and it's actually, it's Sintang's work in fact. So it's, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, you know, here are just some photos of the process that we went through. This is C4 campus where we had an initial meeting where we brought together, um, you know, different groups in fact, who would be involved in, in the, the, the compilation of the information for these profiles, including from Sintang. And, and here is in, in the district itself really working with, with um, local stakeholders on, you know, defining, understanding um, the indicators, understanding the kind of information that should be or could be used to to inform those indicators, thinking about, um, you know, bringing the local flavor into a somewhat standardized global approach. Um, so really, and, and again, stakeholders from government, civil society, um, you know, different grassroots organizations, really research organizations in the district. Um, and, and here's the product. So it's, it's attractive and informative. Um, there, it's two pages and I don't know if you'll show the second page, but the first page, this is, you know, just some highlights, sustainable development at a glance in Sintang. Some figures, you know, about drivers of deforestation and, and land use change um, and a spotlight on innovation. Um, so, you know, something that's unique about, about the, the, the jurisdiction itself and a timeline of, of important events. So kind of how Sintang has progressed in terms of sustainability yeah. commitment and actions. Um, you know, We're this keeping the second page as a surprise so everybody wants to download it, Amy. <laughs> What's interesting about the second page, <laughs> that's where you have the different elements with the, the sort of progress um, measures. And, and I think what's really important here is that, you know, you're going to see a lot of, you know, early and intermediate progress. And, and that's okay, because what it shows is, you know, what's been happening so far and where more investment is in fact needed. Um, and so, so, you know, for those trying to support 
um, districts in their sustainability paths, it becomes very clear um, where that targeted support can, can be directed. So as well as challenges that need to be overcome. So check out that second page as well. Yes, that's the gist of it. Um, so everybody that wants to download is also available in the exhibition booth that um, Altakal is hosting. Um, it's also available through the code um, that was shared in, on the screen and in our website in kabupatenlestari.org. So it will be available live tonight. Uh, the Bahasa version is going to be launched during the festival Kabupaten Lestari um, on the 2nd to 4th of November. Thank you so much, Amy, for uh, continuing your um support in the journey and hopefully more districts to come. Now, we'd like to actually hear from Pak Chandra. Uh, he's been listening quite intently um, and he is going to take us on a journey of reflection coming from the talk and then the fireside chat, the Q&A and the launch of the profile. What is it that we should reflect on Pak Chandra? The time and floor is yours for the next five minutes. Okay, thank you, uh, Rita. Uh, Pertama-tama saya ucapkan selamat ya untuk uh, Pak Bupati dan Mas Gun ya. Sebenarnya ini sudah sejalan juga dengan uh, rencana kita, yaitu adalah transformasi ekonomi. Artinya apa? Artinya kita tidak lagi mengandalkan uh, roh apa uh, sumber daya alam yang bersifat apa raw, tetapi yang sudah kita olah. Karena apa? Karena ketika kita sudah mengolah, itu akan menjadikan nilai tambah yang cukup tinggi. Kalau kita lihat sebelumnya bahwa nah, kalau kita hanya mengandalkan komoditas yang sifatnya pro, ya ketika kita jual, harga tinggi kita untung, harga rendah kita bunuh. Jadi saya menyambut baik uh, inisiatif dari rekan-rekan uh, kabupaten dan juga dari Mas Kun itu utama nih, tentang pengembangan uh, gabus tadi itu. Nah, saya berharap sebenarnya bisa kita tindak lanjuti dan ini bisa menjadi kebaikan role model buat kabupaten-kabupaten lainnya. Artinya apa? Artinya kita melihat bahwa ini adalah suatu terobosan yang terkait yang yang bisa kita lakukan untuk apa namanya mengembangkan atau apa meningkatkan nilai tambah suatu produk. Oke, okay. itu uh, respon saya terkait dengan uh, apa dari kabupaten Siak dan Sintang. Terima kasih dan selamat saya pikir ya atas apa namanya uh, apa namanya upayanya untuk apa mengembangkan dari uh, ya, Pak, Pak Chandra ya. Ya. ya ada sekalian jawab satu pertanyaan ya Pak yes. terkait ya. support ya. dari national government terima kasih Pak uh, support dari national government uh, kita mungkin terkait dengan hal tersebut uh, nanti saya akan coba apa sampaikan kepada unit terkait di Bapenas agar juga bisa inline dengan kebijakan kementeriannya dan juga memang kalau dalam hal ini kita melihat bahwa pemerintah itu tidak bisa apa-apa tanpa support dari apa namanya daerah kemudian juga dari masyarakat di sekitar dan juga tadi terima kasih Bu Ade ya dari driver ya sudah support juga terkait dengan pengembangan apa namanya produk dari lokal dari apa namanya dari daerah. Mungkin dari situ yang terkait dengan Sintang dan Siak ya. The next related about the question. Most of the question related to how to deal between growth versus environment. First, uh, related to growth. Uh, we have a high uh, target of growth. We set the growth in the medium term plan 2020-2024 We are, the average is six percent. It means that not six percent and say six percent, but we uh, care about the about the quality of growth. What does it mean the quality of growth? The, so the the quality of growth, uh, high growth, will impact the reduction of employment, poverty, a better human uh, development index, Gini ratio, and environment. So if you look at the medium term development plan, we set the indicator for the environment. So we, uh, this is, there is a greenhouse cases, uh, the, the indicator. Uh, it means that we uh, not only want high growth, but 
we want to the good to quality of growth. <laughs> Related to COVID, COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, this is like a, it's like a wake up call for the government. So we will set the economy about the related the information about the disaster planning, about the health sector and social protection. So and we see about related to COVID. If you look at the data, it is uh, like a, a new world. So we call it in Bapenas the whole uh, the whole new world. It's like the uh, soundtrack from Aladdin. So uh, in COVID, we have uh, changes about the supply and demand. If you look at my first presentation, uh, uh, we see that the demand for the uh, health product uh, will increase, and uh, uh, people will care about the health. Yeah. So I think it's the very good uh, point to uh, to ask related how to uh, deal with that. Lastly, uh, the national yeah. government uh, has decided to pursue build back better strategy adopted uh, from post disaster recovery. Build back better aims to avoid the original vulnerability and transform the recovery process into better direction that includes social, economics, and environmental transformation. Long-term economic stimulus will be designed to, be, to build a stronger economy, ensure long-term health, create green jobs, tackle climate change, and uh, build the resilience society in the future. I think uh, that's the short uh, conclusion for me. Uh, I think this very, very good, uh, very good presenter and good panelists uh, in this event. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Chandra, um, for that reflection. And I'm glad to hear that you mentioned repeatedly how national government is also very related to the nature-based economy. And this can be, you know, our, our ammunition going forward, how uh, this can help us build back better in terms of um, Indonesia's future. So I'd like to thank all of the panelists um, and um, the speakers. Pak Bupati, terima kasih banyak. Mas Gun from Sumatra, thank you. Sanjif, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak. Um, uh, Sanjif from Singapore, Pak Chandra dari depan Mbak Penas, uh, Ibu Ade dari Jakarta, dan juga Bu Amy. So thank you. Hopefully, audience that is um, representing uh, different parts of the world sees this last shot. I'm putting all of you on the screen right now, speakers, so that you can see how this is the multi-stakeholders world that we're thriving for. The investment community, the private sector, civil society, youth entrepreneurs, the investment side, is hand in hand also to the growth that the subnational and national government is pursuing. High investment means the one that preserve the environment and increase welfare of the people. So hopefully this is the nature-based economy that everybody would support and we all welcome you in this journey going forward. Before we close, we'd like to actually take a quick picture with the panelists. So three, two, one, cheese. Thank you. And this will be the opening scene of Sintang's festival. Uh, so your face is going to be in the um, opening ceremony, <laughs> just a note. Uh, Pak Bupati, we're going to show your picture. Kita akan uh, perlihatkan uh, posternya uh, Festival Kabupaten Lestari yang akan digelar tanggal 2 sampai tanggal 4 November nanti di Sintang dan juga melalui layar kaca. It will be also broadcast virtually so everybody here in the audience can join. There will be a special performance by a wonderful pop star, Indonesian pop star Mbak Andin Aisyah ya Pak ya collaborating with a gentleman from Sintang that is playing sape, the traditional instrument Baby Borneo. The festival is also going to talk about the governance part of the conversation. It will also talk about the regulation part and the planning. Also, the exciting part, the growth of the medium and small scale industry on nature-based economy. So join us the 2nd to the 4th of November, 2020. Thank you, Pak Bupati, for joining us. Now, for all of 
lucky uh, fellows that have visited our exhibition booth, there's still time. You can be part of the owner of the forest behind me. We are giving free forest adoption e-certificates that is a reflection of today's topic, the nature-based economy. This is a chance for you to own part of the forest by allowing rangers to have livelihood, by allowing local communities on the villages to develop non-timber forest product to be value-added, high-quality nature-based product that makes Indonesia proud. Thank you so much for joining us. Come and visit us in the booth and see you next time, especially during the Sustainable Districts Festival. We're all waiting for you. Thank you. Bye for now.